And then I said, no, Joe. It was hilarious. <laughs> I bet it was. Hello? Who goes there? Hey, guys. I'd like to join G.I. Joe. We know who you are. And it ain't happening. No, bros. I'm a good burger. Well, hell then. Come on. Heroes. So gullible. Did you say something? Nah, bro. Nah. Actually, what I meant to say is, made is murder! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified series, Special Missions Cobra Island Baroness with Cobra Coil. Just more of a mouthful every time. Now, this is coming in a bit late. I've had other stuff push this back, but I wanted to send out thanks to Rob and Caden once again for helping me out with these damn Target exclusives. The only one I've seen in person is Roadblock. I've seen Baroness pop up on Pop Finder one time in my area, and it went gone. And I can't even get over there fast enough. And if you're in any of the Facebook groups or forums or anywhere else, you know that the Target stuff... Mm. Looking at the package, it, this is bigger than I thought it'd be. You have a window showing the motorcycle, some weapons, some more weapons. There's a weapon. Here's a weapon. Everywhere's a weapon. Weapon. Warnings. Don't put them in your mouth. Down here, you have some Baroness artwork of her riding the motorcycle. And then on the side, there's more artwork of her with that snake robot thing coiled around her arm and shooting out a laser. And I'm glad they did this because originally when I saw this, I thought, what the hell are you supposed to do that? But it's almost like an instruction sheet on the front. It also shows that the bigger blasters go on the side of the motorcycle. Does that show that on the... No, nope. but I do, for some reason, love this big ass map. I'm gonna have to cut it out. Keep it. Just... <laughs> on the other side, you get this new style bio that they've been using where you have to go to the website and decipher it. Thankfully, you go there and she already has a bio. So you get her name, height of six foot, a whole background, and then it's level four intelligence, level one light weapons, level three psyops, and level four disguise. On the top, Cobra! G.I. Joe, she's number 13 in the series. On the bottom, a bunch of legalese, warnings, barcode, but let's get this open and see if this is worth all the trouble. Worth all the trouble. See what I did there? Wherever there's trouble, G.I. Joe's there. Get the tray with all the stuff in it, and then the background is a very large uh, Cobra Island logo. Again, I love this, and I don't know why. And then on the end, if you want to snip that off and keep it as a file card, you can do that. I don't know why. Well, I guess I know why they put the handlebar as a separate piece in the package. While this one is attached, I guess it's so it would actually fit within the width of the packaging, I guess. I don't know. Holy moly, the ball on this is huge compared to the socket here. There's no way to just push that in. I'm gonna have to go heat that up. Oh yeah, a little heat from the heat gun. Boom, easy to push in and out. So I'm gonna leave that in there. And when it cools off, it should be a fairly tight fit. And getting it out of the package, messing around with it for a little bit, this is a fantastic representation of Baroness. But as an action figure, it's a little rough around the edges. And I hate to say that because it is a great figure, but there's just some things that you get to and it's like, what the hell? First up on the body, we expected an armored look. It, that's just the way this line is. And even if we hadn't seen some concept or some like preliminary art for Baroness, we would have figured, oh, she's going to have some armor here and on the shoulder pads and on the bracers. But here it does a good job of getting the essence of the classic Baroness. It's all in black, which we were seeing some pictures where this was gold and some gold elsewhere. I don't know if that's been changed or if there's a mainline Baroness coming, but here it's all black with some red. The only gold really used here is on the edges of the glasses and then way down here on the side of the boot. Otherwise, it's black in varying sheens. Well, I guess this is gray right here. But the gray helps break up the black. It doesn't really stand out. In fact, the only things that really stand out at you are the Cobra logos. Unfortunately, on mine, you can see the paint on this one missed off to the side. And then on the other side, it got applied a little low. On the belt, the paint kind of strays to her right. But then the main one up on the chest, the one that draws your eye the most, it's fairly clean. It does get off in a couple places, but not as bad as the other three. But then the sculpt, all the armor plates are nice and sharp. You can see where it ends, where it begins. And then on the undersuit, there's the texture to it that 
man, it just brings a lot of detail to the overall piece. The legs have a plated look from thigh all the way down to foot, and it's meant to look like scales or something like that. Everything in Cobra has a serpent motif. You can even see on the bigger right shoulder pad, there's almost a Cobra logo peeking over, and then you get to the left, it's full on snake. There's not even any kind of attempt to hide it on this side. But it's the face that really does it here. This is one of the best female faces that I've seen in a long time. And on top of that, the fact that they integrated the glasses into the overall look so well that it's kind of amazing. I mean, there are lenses in those glasses, which is really hard to do at this scale. And to go beyond that, it looks like the eyes are actually magnified inside the glasses, like they're thick lenses. Like Baroness definitely can't find her way around Cobra Base without them. But then the eyes and the lips are photo reeled on, so nice application of color. Very crisp, very clean. Of course, when you get right up on it, you can see the little pixels, but at normal distance, it's beautiful. Her hair is meant to be jet black. I would like to see maybe just a wash or some dry brush to bring out the texture, but it does a good job on its own, really. And that swoops down comes down to a very straight cut. You think, oh, Baroness doesn't have time to mess with hair. She's just going to cut it off, get down the road. The glasses are a separate piece, and at first I thought, oh, I'm going to break those or I'm going to knock them out of place, but I've been messing around and they stay in position. I think they're glued at the ridge right there and then back where it hits the ears or under the hair somewhere. Her knife sheath on her leg is a separate piece. You can rotate it around, put it wherever you want. It doesn't really want to slide simply because of, you know, step, 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 step. But I'm sure if you heated it up, you could slide it off. But then you keep seeing this jump up and down. Yes, the belt with the holsters on the back, that's also a separate piece. And like most things that, <laughs> it's one of those, you get the pose, and then you put the belt in position because it's gonna slide around, get out of the way. I don't wanna glue it down like I do most belts because I like being able to put it where I want, but <laughs> nine times out of 10, I look at the figure after I've done something and it's like this. So you get it down into position and ooh, it rides the hips really well. It looks like it's meant to be there. So I can't fault that at all. I can fault these single elbows though. I, I understand, I guess, maybe the thinness of the arms on female figures aren't meant to have double joints or something or it's against safety regulations, but they have been doing a great job lately of other figures with single joints getting up past 90, but because this armor plate is around the forearm, I guess that gets in the way a bit because you get it to here and I think that's what's running into the upper arm. You can see it's not bent all the way, but with some force you can go back, but it's going to push itself back down. So to maintain the look of that plate, I guess is why they didn't cut further down into the arm, but it kind of works against itself. Also the detents in the feet, I've loosened them up, moving them around, but the sculpt on the front of the shin it gets in the way of forward movement. Good back, just not a lot forward. So when you're trying to stand her up and balance her, it can be a chore sometimes. Well, <laughs> of course, but you know how it goes. It things and you get it out of position and... <clears throat> I will say the hair is very, very soft, but that doesn't stop it from getting tight where it's glued to the head. Looking up can be harder than, you know, figures without hair. There's no surprise there though. We knew, oh, long hair, gonna get in the way of articulation. Because speaking of that, there is a hinge. Well, let's just look at it. There's a hinge at the top of the neck with a ball going up into the head, but then there's also a slight ball joint at the bottom of the neck. Like I said, hair gets in the way of up, but slightly up if you arc her back, <laughs> you can look up. Can't look all the way down though. Meh, little tilt, swivel. There is a butterfly joint at the shoulder, goes back, goes forward. And then at first you think these shoulder pads are gonna get in the way, but they're made like the new Stormtrooper and a couple of other figures where it's actually sandwiched in between the butterfly joint and the shoulder itself. Doesn't get in the way of the hinge coming up. And when you go to swivel around, it rides there in between. If you just go to crank on it, it may get stuck, but most of the time, just whoop. Already talked about the terrible elbows. They come up to about right there and then they swivel. Dual trigger finger hands and they both have up and down hinge, which is perfect. That works. And then the wrist rotates. Nice ball joint in the mid torso hidden by the armor. And then there's also one at the waist, but even those two together, Eh, it's not bad crunch, but it's not as far as some other G.I. Joe figures. Good arc back though. Beautiful tilt. There it is. There is a drop down to the hip so you can get forward movement up past 90. Back kind of hits the butt sculpt right there, but it goes back as far as you want to go. Out. Oh yeah. Better than Spider-Man. Bring the leg back down. 
shift it back up swivel at the thigh double knee oh not quite the sculpt or something gets in the way oh actually the knee doesn't have a cut out right there for it to go as further than it does it's not actually the leg running into each other that's just as far as the joint goes hinge at the ankle goes back forward nope and then forward facing pin for rocker for accessories of course the biggest one in the package is the motorcycle or coil cycle or whatever the hell it is it has a nice futuristic look to it i kind of feel like the red should be more metallic i'm okay with the black being painted a matte color i guess that fits in with the overall scheme of things but I'd, I'd like to have a little pizzazz here, a little bit of oomph. The red just comes off looking plasticky. But I do like the overall shape. Yes, it's sci-fi, but this is G.I. Joe. That's what G.I. Joe is now. And <laughs> really, that's what G.I. Joe's always been. Some text sculpt here. I'm sure it's not like a real motor. It's probably some kind of fusion generator or something that propels it forward. I don't know. Have the exhaust pipe sticking out from under the whatever luggage rack. 0 0.01. I don't know what that's supposed to mean with the little boop. There's a frosted translucent window right here that kind of fades from green up to clear. I like the look of it, but it stands out a bit. I don't know, maybe that's a digital readout because you see here, gauges have that same translucent green to them. And for some reason, that's hinge too. I don't know, get up out of the way or The handlebars themselves are on ball joints, so they get some movement to them. But then if you go here, it actually turns the front wheel a bit. Well, it's more of a tilt than a turn. <laughs> Baroness definitely has the articulation to go on the bike, but you'll notice these pegs right here, the hole is in the heel and they're too far in to actually put the foot on the peg because the motor sticks out right here and kicks her leg out just enough to miss the peg. There's also these back here, which if she's in a speeding position, that's the ones I think she would use. And it may take some, you know, finesse to get her on there, but once you do, it looks good. I mean, well, the hair kind of gets in the way. She can't look forward unless you arc her back further. But when she's riding the motorcycle, safety first, and that's why she comes with a motorcycle helmet. And even that's gonna follow the snake theme. You can see large fangs sculpted into the front of the visor right there. And then on top, the top of the snake head. There's just a lot of little details to make it look more and more like a snake. But like I showed a minute ago, her head is easy enough to pop off and then the helmet just pops right on. And that gives you all the up you need for her to, in fact, it goes further than you need to go. But when she's riding the motorcycle, you can look forward. She comes with what looks like a couple of heavy rifles, bigger than you would want her to dual wield, but you can put them in her hands if you want to. But they also have these left and right pegs, and that's to plug into the bike itself. Because this is the new G.I. Joe line and they need to incorporate some gold somewhere, here are her two personal pistols. If you have the Duke figure, you've seen this sculpt before, but she can dual wield these, or they go nicely into the holsters on her back. In fact, I didn't think I'd find myself saying this, but adding these here and then looking at her from the front, it adds just a bit of color to it. <laughs> and I know it's Baroness, red, black, no gold, but yeah, that's not bad. And I guess the same could be said for her little Cobra dagger too. The blade is on the front here, actually puts it backwards, but to go into the sheath to make it look like the snake is facing forward, that's the way it had to be sculpted. Doesn't help that the dagger is loose inside the sheath too. Kind of mess with it and it's gonna fall out. Of course, you know, if you're dangling Baroness upside down, it's gonna fall out. And to make matters worse, the grip of the knife is tiny, smaller than her actual hand, so it kind of just flops around in there. You can angle it forward a bit and push. You gotta find that sweet spot and then she's holding it out forward. 99% of the time, gonna be in the sheath. And that just leaves her robotic laser snake. I've never seen this before. Maybe it was the comics, maybe it was the cartoon, but it's nice. And of course, of course, there's gonna be another snake themed thing in this set. I do like how the silver and the lighter gold makes it stand out from everything else here though. And that's easy enough to just cool around her arm bring it down it is slightly soft so you can stretch it out if you need to it's a cool little concept don't get me wrong and i like it but i don't know it doesn't seem really practical you know unless this snake has a mind of its own and it's always around somewhere baroness is like out of ammo and this thing comes jumping up and <laughs> ah, i just realized another thing going back to neutral position her arms are kind of held out by the armor on the chest so you can't get them straight down. You gotta kind of turn the elbows in 
and then kick them just a bit. Height-wise, she stands at exactly six inches tall, which matches the six foot we just saw on the G.I. Joe website, which puts her perfectly in scale with both Destro and Storm Shadow. And that goes the same with the Cobra Trooper and Cobra Commander, which puts her taller than Scarlet. The more and more I wrap my head around Scarlet being almost teenager-ish, I'm okay. And then she's shorter than Duke. But I bet she'd even give Gung Ho and Roadblock a run for their money. I actually didn't expect her to be taller than this Marvel Legends Black Widow movie Black Widow, though. And then I've snuck the Gamer vs. Captain America into most of my G.I. Joe reviews, and it looks good here, too. Same could be said for the Captain America First Avenger 2-pack of, well, Captain America and Peggy Carter. And the reason I bring this in is because I saw somebody do this, I cannot remember who, I'm sorry, but you pop the head on Peggy Carter off, and of course, like we've shown, Baroness's head comes off nicely. This actually fits on here. If you push all the way down, it becomes no neck, so you want to leave it floating just a bit. But if you want a quick and easy custom of uh, Baroness as Major Hooper from the Mass Device arc, uh, there you go. It's definitely short, but... Eh, it's a little Easter egg. Hell, even the skin tones almost match. So at the end of the day, a fun set, but I don't know if I really needed a motorcycle and all the extra stuff here. I think I've said several times and it's been rumored that we're getting a Baroness in the main wave, so I don't know. If you miss out on this at Target because it's been a pain in the ass to find, I would just wait for that. Yeah, sure, the shoulder pads may be gold and it may have some different colors here and there. And if it holds to the artwork we've seen, it, there'll be some purple highlights to the hair too. But it would still be Baroness. If you just want the straight black costume, the more classic feel here, then yeah, I, I, I just, but if you're just wanting a Baroness that fits into the overall scheme of this new G.I. Joe line, it may be worth waiting and seeing if the main line gives us one. Believe me, I know how hard it is to wait and to be unsure if we're going to get Baroness in the main line. So when I had a chance to have a friend pick it up for me, then I, I couldn't pass that up. I want vehicles in the line and I'm okay with this motorcycle. I actually kind of like it, but if given the choice of just a Baroness action figure or a Baroness with extra cannons and the coiled up snake and a motorcycle helmet and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just give me the figure. I just want the character. In fact, having this version with the all black classic inspired look in hand, but having the rest of my G.I. Joes on the shelf, I want a Baroness with some gold and some purple highlights and yeah, I don't know. I feel like it'd stand out on the shelf a bit more. Or maybe it's a case of, I got this. What's next? Give me something else. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I just realized I forgot to do some size comparisons with this. Here is the Black Widow motorcycle that came in the Legendary Rider set. The coil is quite a bit bigger. And the same can be said for the Squirrel Girl moped or Deadpool moped that this reuses.